All right, let's get right into it. If you're a home labber, you know that building a Proxmox cluster is kind of like a rite of passage. But right away, you're faced with this huge fork in the road, a choice about storage that pretty much defines your entire project. So today, we're going to break down that exact choice. So if this slide hits home for you, if you're trying to squeeze every ounce of reliability out of your gear without, you know, taking out a second mortgage, then you know the struggle is real. You want all that cluster power, but you're dealing with real-world budget constraints. And believe me, that is not an exaggeration. This one decision about your storage can be the difference between a cluster that just purrs along smoothly and a total nightmare project that eats up your entire weekend. So, yeah, let's make sure we get this right. To make this all feel a bit more real, let's look at a super common scenario. This isn't just theory, okay? This is a dilemma that builders face every single day. And it's the perfect way to understand what's really at stake here. So here's the setup. Three pretty modest, but still capable, Proxmox nodes. In each one, you've got a single 500 gig SSD and a smaller 125 gig NVMe. The mission is crystal clear, high availability. That means if one machine dies, your stuff keeps running. The catch, we're on a tight budget. So what's the smartest way to pull this off? Well, the first place almost everybody looks is Ceph. I mean, it's the big name, right? It's the enterprise-grade solution for shared storage that promises that true, bloop-proof high availability. It just feels like the right professional choice to make. And that line of thinking usually leads you down one of two paths. You either put Proxmox on the little NVMe and use the big SSD for all your stuff storage, or you flip it and try to get your VMs running on that faster NVMe inside of Ceph. Both of these sound totally logical, right? It's the classic approach. But as we're about to find out, this might not be the solution you're looking for. But then you hear this. This one piece of advice just cuts right through all the noise. And honestly, it sounds almost too simple, doesn't it? But this single comment completely flips the script and points to a much smarter, leaner way forward. So that brings us to the showdown. And this isn't really just Ceph versus ZFS. It's about a bigger idea, using the right tool for the job. And I gotta say, this analogy of putting racing fuel in a go-kart, it just perfectly captures the heart of the problem. So what does that actually mean? Well, look, Ceph is incredibly powerful. There's no question about it, but it was designed for a very specific type of environment. And when you try to run it on limited consumer-grade hardware, like the setup we're talking about, you get all of the complexity and all of the overhead, but you get absolutely none of the performance benefits. It's like you've got this high-octane fuel, but the little go-kart engine just has no idea what to do with it. You see, the key thing to get is what Ceph really expects from you. It doesn't just want one SSD per machine. It wants multiple disks. It doesn't just limp along on your standard gigabit network. It's basically demanding a dedicated 10 gigabit network at a minimum. It's built for this world of balanced, expensive enterprise hardware, not for a budget-friendly home lab. And hey, that's not just a suggestion. Listen to someone who's been there, done that. They put it pretty bluntly. If you're below a certain hardware level, and that's way, way beyond our little three node, one SSD setup, the performance just falls off a cliff. You're gonna spend way more time debugging than actually using the thing. Okay, so if Ceph is the wrong tool for this job, what's the right one? Well, this is where ZFS replication just completely changes the entire story. It's a totally different way of thinking about the same exact problem. How do we get high availability? Let's walk through how this works, because the beauty of it is just how simple it is. So first, you install Proxmox with ZFS on the main drive in each of your nodes. Then, you set up a simple little schedule to copy or replicate your important VMs over to the other nodes every few minutes. Now, if a whole node goes down, Proxmox just says, no problem, and automatically fires up the VM from its copy on a healthy machine. It's even smart enough to handle replicating data back automatically when you move a VM around. It's just elegant. So that's all the theory, but does it actually work when the rubber meets the road? Let's get to the verdict and see what folks who are actually running this kind of setup have to say. Think of these as reports from the front lines of home lab experimentation. I mean, this is what it's all about, right? This user tested it by literally pulling the plug on their main machine and boom, their services were back up and running in under three minutes. That is effective real world high availability without all the headaches of Ceph. And that wasn't just a one-off. The consensus just keeps building with comments like this one. People are saying fast migrations and quick recovery from failures. This is the promise of a cluster. 
delivered in a simple, straightforward package that actually works. So let's bring it all back to our original question and just lay out the final verdict here. Those Ceph options we talked about, for this kind of scale, they're not ideal. But simply installing Proxmox on your main SSD with ZFS and then just using replication, that is the clear, hands-down winner. It's easy, it's fast, it's reliable, and it just works on modest hardware. You know, this whole debate, it's not really just about technical specs and storage protocols. It's actually about a philosophy. It's about choosing the path that empowers you instead of the one that just adds a whole bunch of unnecessary complexity. Think about it. You want that thrill of watching a VM seamlessly migrate from one machine to another. You want reliability and peace of mind. What you don't want is to spend all your nights trying to tune a complex system that was never even designed for your hardware to begin with. This whole thing should be fun, not a constant battle. And that right there is the big takeaway for your home lab, and heck, maybe for a lot more than just that. The most powerful solution is very often the simplest one. By choosing ZFS replication over Ceph in this situation, you're not taking a shortcut, you're taking the smarter path. And that kind of leaves us with one last thing to chew on. This whole principle of choosing the right size tool for the job, well, it doesn't just apply to servers, does it? Where else in our lives are we overcomplicating things? What other go-karts are we trying to power with racing fuel? Definitely something to think about. 